All right. Today we are talking about rookies. Every single year you have a bunch of rookies competing for the Calder Trophy, the trophy that's awarded to the best rookie every NHL season. It's always fun to take a look at the NHL rookie race because every single year you're looking at the future of the NHL, essentially. Every now and then you'll have your occasional Connor McDavid or Connor Bedard or Michael Bunting or... And this year in particular is a lot of fun because I would say you have five or six rookies that honestly could compete, and maybe even win the Calder Trophy. And we're going to go through all of those rookies today and more as well. So here I have 13 rookies listed. It's not that good. You can see my awful handwriting again. 13 skaters and three goaltenders is what I have here for you guys today. And we're going to go through each and every single one of them, look at their stats last year, and kind of just talk about whether or not I think they can win and my overall thoughts on each of them. So without further ado, let's start off with Matt Vey Mitchkoff. Mitchkoff is obviously, I would say, the favorite to win the Calder Trophy right now. You look at every single betting site except for maybe a few outliers he is the number one ranked rookie to win the trophy. So it makes a ton of sense. And I think that he could be very exciting this year for Philadelphia. And honestly, already has. Mitchkoff had 41 points in 47 games played last year with HK Sochi. And even though, yes, he got loaned from St. Petersburg to Sochi, he still had a very good season and honestly surprised everyone by coming over a season early. Actually, not even a season early. I would say he came over a few years early, actually. Again, if you guys saw my video on my expectations for the Philadelphia Flyers, you guys would have seen my overall thoughts on Mitchkoff, where I projected him to be. I would recommend checking out that video. But at least as of right now, I am hoping for a good 40-point season out of Mitchkoff. That is my floor. But if he does finish below that, I wouldn't be surprised. And i actually be okay with it because, honestly... It's a rookie season. You don't know what you're expecting out of everyone, obviously. We're going to move right along from Mitchkoff over to Macklin Celebrini, the first overall pick in this past year's draft by the San Jose Sharks. Celebrini coming off of a really good year from Boston University, had 64 points in 38 games played, and he looks like somebody who is very creative and is really being hyped up. Now, we are a few days into the NHL season, so I'm going to refer to the 2024-25 season here a little bit, but we saw Celebrini score one of the strangest, worst, coolest, interesting goals I've ever seen. But unfortunately, as of a couple of days ago, Celebrini was placed on injury reserve. He will be out for at least a week, which really stinks because he obviously has the first overall pick and looked really exciting when he was playing with the club. But if he does come back and does kind of rejuvenate himself, he did have two points in his NHL debut, so he can't help but be excited for him a little bit, and hopefully that will transfer over into the NHL level more and more and more from what we saw in Boston University. Now, someone from also Boston University who looks very exciting for the Montreal Canadiens is Lane Hudson. Hudson was a fourth-round pick a few years back and wasn't looked at as much because, look, he was a fourth-round pick, but he has really blossomed into a really star-studded, offensively creative defenseman. I mean, come on, you see some of the plays that he made in training camp, some of the plays he made in the preseason. This guy has really good hands. So much good hands that he had 49 points in 38 games played this year with Boston University alongside Macklin Celebrini as well. For a defenseman like him who is undersized, I do think that he is going to blossom offensively. He already has. He actually leads rookies in points right now if you go look at it, unless you're looking at this like a few days from now, obviously. But I think that Hudson's one of those players who was really going to blossom into something very good. But this year could be a real developmental year for him. He could have really good plays offensively. But I have a feeling that he is going to get embarrassed defensively sometimes being an undersized defender like he is. And that's okay because some people do have that happen when they get to the NHL level. I mean, come on, look at look at Jeff Petrie. He's been in the league for like 10 years. But I would say of the defensemen that I do have on this list, and there isn't a lot of them. In fact, he might, he might be the only one, actually. He is the most exciting of those guys for sure. And I think that he could definitely come top three or top two 
in Calder voting. Now, number four is somebody who played in the NHL last year, and he upset some people because he meets the Calder eligibility by only one game. That is Logan Stankoven of the Dallas Stars. He split time in the AHL and then the NHL, putting up 14 points in 24 games played with the NHL Stars, and then 57 points in 47 games played with the AHL Stars. Stankoven also spent some time in the playoffs and looked even more exciting there as well. I would say there's a lot more hype around Stankoven rather than Hudson or I guess Celebrini too because we know what Stankoven can do. We saw how he produced at the NHL level and I think that there are some people who are picking him to actually win the Calder Trophy because of that. A little bit of an honorable mention to uh, Maverick Bork who played with him in, in the AHL with the Texas Stars. Maverick Bork also looks very entertaining as well, is not on this list of rookies, but is somebody who could make an impact this year in the NHL. On to the next, we have Cutter Gauthier, a guy who was traded last year from the team that drafted him to the SoCal Anaheim Ducks, and he looks like he could be a monster. There's a lot of people who see Mitchkov, Celebrini, Hudson, and kind of overlook Gauthier, Gauthier had a monster year in Boston College. Actually had more points in Celebrini. Yes, I know. It was only one. I know that. He had 65 points in 41 games played with Boston College, Macklin Celebrini's ironic rival, and is now playing on an ironic rival against Celebrini's team. It's kind of interesting how that works, but Gauthier is a monster of a player. He is very good, and I think people kind of overlook him because they see guys like Mitchkoff and um, Celebrini in the pool this year. Cutter Gauthier, if the Anaheim Ducks do kind of surprise with some of their young players, he could very well win the damn thing, so don't count him out just yet. Now that I look at this, I probably should have paired Celebrini and his partner, Will Smith, not, not that one. Will Smith of Boston College together because they both play on the same team. They're both making their rookie season debut. And come on, two of probably the best prospects in the league making their debut rookie season together. That's storybook incredible for the San Jose Sharks. Will Smith actually had 71 points in 41 games played with Boston College. And of the guys that I have listed in this rookie pool, I believe he has the most points of any of them. He looks like a highly talented, highly creative player and honestly could win the Calder as well. I would say there are six rookies here that you can make a legitimate argument for them to win the Calder Trophy this year. And Will Smith is definitely one of them. He had a very good year in Boston College and him and Celebrini connecting together could be the next like, I guess, Raymond and Cider for rookies. So those are six guys who I believe have a legitimate chance at winning the Calder Trophy. Now we get into the guys who I can kind of just go a little bit rapid fire through. Not really talk about too much because honestly I don't think they're going to contend for the Calder. But they're still going to be exciting rookies for sure. The first one on that list is Rutger McGroarty. Recently traded from the Winnipeg Jets to the Pittsburgh Penguins in a controversial one-for-one -one deal that made a lot of Winnipeg Jets fans angry, specifically my podcast host, Carter. But McGroarty, for good reasons, looks very exciting. He had 52 points in 36 games played with the University of Michigan. He is one of the guys on this list who honestly looks really exciting, but actually might be like in and out of the NHL. It seems like they might not be as reliable with McGroarty in Pittsburgh. They might want to put him down for a season with the Wilkes-Barre Strand Penguins. But he did make the lineup because I believe Brian Rust is injured. But when Rust comes back, there's a decent chance we see McGroarty go down. Next up, we have a older guy. This guy is much older than a lot of the other players on this list because he actually spent time in the KHL before coming over. It's Maxim Tisplikov of the New York Islanders. Tisplikov had 47 points in 65 games played with Spartak Moskova of the KHL. That is, I think, a loan, I believe he was loaned to that team. But a guy like Tisplikov playing regular minutes in the KHL, putting up 47 points is very impressive and getting signed to that deal by the Islanders. He honestly could be somebody who honestly really makes a dent in the NHL. Then you have Josh Doan of Utah, who put up nine points in 11 games last year with the NHL Coyotes and had 46 points in 62 games played 
for the AHL Coyotes. Yes, he is the son of Josh Doan and looks actually pretty exciting. He already has a goal through Utah in their first couple of games. He's going to be real dangerous as a second-round pick. Nikolai Kovalenko of the Colorado Avalanche, similar to Desplikov, was drafted by the Avalanche in 2018. That was like six years ago at this point. And Kovalenko put up 35 points this past year in 42 games played with Torpedo. Actually came over a little bit for Colorado, played in the playoffs, looked very good, and actually made the team out of camp. His story is similar to Kirill Kaprizov of Minnesota, except he's not Kirill Kaprizov. He's Nikolai Kovalenko. After that, then, you have Samuel Hanzik of the Calgary Flames, who also made the team out of camp, had 31 points in 33 games played with the Vancouver Giants. I thought that he looked solid last year in a shortened season, and the fact that he made the roster after not really playing that much last year in the WHL is... Pretty impressive. We'll see what he can do. Yuri Kulich of the Buffalo Sabres had 45 points in 57 games played with the Rochester Americans last year. He did make the roster. He actually played in the Global Series and has been on the roster since. And I think due to injuries, he's going to have a real chance to prove himself or else he's probably going back down to the minors. Mackie Samoskovich of the Florida Panthers had 54 points in 62 games played in the American Hockey League with the Charlotte Checkers. He is already playing a regular NHL role with the team. Since they lost a lot of depth, it's really given him an opportunity to make this roster, and hopefully he might make a name for himself this year as a old Michigan guy. And then finally, I'm just going to throw him in here, but Jet Luchanko of the Philadelphia Flyers, he made this team out of training camp, shockingly. Had a pretty good year with Guelph last year, and hopefully he can keep that up with the Flyers, but I probably think he's going to be sent back to Guelph as well. And those are all the notable skaters that I saw that I thought were of note to possibly be in the rookie class, possibly be in contention for the Calder. I think we know who's going to be doing it, though. It's the six guys um, that I already mentioned at the beginning of the video. The other guys that I mentioned after that were kind of just honorable mentions and other guys that I thought would be fun in this rookie class. But I do want to talk about three rookie goaltenders who I think could have a chance at maybe surprising some people and getting up there in the Calder race. The first one should be very obvious. It's Dustin Wolf. He had a 7-7-1 last year with the Calgary Flames. A .893 and a 3.16 goals against average. With the AHL Flames, though, he had a 20-12-3 record, a 2.5 goals against, and a .923. Wolf has been hyped up for a long time as this really exciting goalie for Calgary. And even in the first few games of the season this year, he's actually looked very impressive. Actually backstopped the Flames to a 6-3 win last night against my Philadelphia Flyers. So if there was a rookie that I would have picked to win the Calder Trophy, it is 100% Dustin Wolf for sure. Somebody else, though, that I think could be really interesting is Joel Blomquist of the Pittsburgh Penguins. He had a 25-12-6 record with a 2.16 and a .921 record with the Wilkes-Barre Strand Penguins. I saw him play a couple times in Lehigh Valley. If I have a picture, I'll pull it up here. But I've seen him play a few times in person. He is very good. He is really good, and he's already played a few games in the NHL and already looks pretty entertaining, if I do say so myself. So I'm really looking forward to him maybe taking over the NHL role with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Maybe he takes over Jari. This is maybe the Matt Murray or the Mark andre you, know, you get what I mean. And finally, the last rookie that I want to talk about before I get into my call to predictions is Archer Shelov. Last year in the playoffs, we know what this guy can do. But with the AHL Canucks, he had a 16-11-6 record, a 2.74 and a .907 with the Abbotsford Canucks. So he did have a pretty good record down there and looks like he could be the 1A, 1B right now with Demko being out of the lineup. So he could contend for it as well. But those are pretty much all the rookies that I think are going to be in contention for the Calder Trophy or be exciting. Now it's time for my overall Calder predictions. Two finalists. I have Macklin Celebrini as my first one. First overall pick. Already looks really good. I think he's going to be exciting. And then I have Lane Hudson as the other one. Already looks like he's offensively talented with Montreal as a undersized defenseman. He's actually my second place guy. I think he could damn well win the thing, to be honest with you. And then my winner 
Number one is Matt Vey Mitchkov. You can call that bias all you want, but I saw what this guy did in the preseason. I saw this guy play the first two games of his NHL career. He looks a lot of fun to watch, and I think that when he gets adjusted, when he gets to the legitimate level that he can get to, he's going to be dangerous. But yeah, those are rookies that I think are going to be really exciting this year. Maybe not all of them contend for the Calder Trophy, but I think those are a lot of guys who people are going to have their eyes on during the 2024-25 season. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to like, subscribe down below. I greatly appreciate it. We are getting closer to 3,000. We're almost 100 away, actually. So keep the subscribers coming. I really do appreciate it. And anyways, that's it for me. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.